Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Saturday, December 10th, 2016. Let's jump right into VR, guys. Start with the preamble, namely why the hell this news video is so late. So I, uh, we had our company's annual Christmas dinner tonight, had the news researched beforehand, but ran out of time to film, thus doing that now. So apologies if this is getting to you outside of the normal routine where you watch this, but here she be. All right, so first story is regarding GravLab. Now, GravLab is a game, it's a puzzler for the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive, specifically for use with each of their respective controllers, so the Touch and, of course, Vive's controllers. It's a puzzle game, and the author likens it to Lemmings. If you're not familiar with Lemmings, it's an early 90s game from DMA Design, published by Psygnosis, basically the last gasp of the 16-bit before PC dominated with its VGA. It was a very fun puzzle game. Lots of replay value, 100 levels, I'm pretty sure, with that first uh, game. Lots and lots of play value. Grav Lab along the same lines, except you're not trying to get lemmings from point A to B. You're trying to drag your balls across the room from point A to point B. And you want to make sure that your balls don't get crushed, that your balls don't get stretched, right? Or vice clamped. All kinds of things could happen to your balls. So you got to get them from A to B safely. And there's all kinds of gadgets to guide your balls along their path. So uh, generally what happens, like in Lemmings, if you have one horrible design flaw, your balls could basically cease to exist and you need to restart the level. So very cool. Check that out. Like I said, in early access right now, but sounds like it'll be a fun puzzler. And then next, I just wanted to talk about Arizona Sunshine, having a blast with that game. Uh, it's just fun. Uh, first person game, it's got wave elements to it, but it has a nice variety of zombies. You've got the sprinters, the lumbering guys, uh, somewhere in between. Uh, lots of gratuitous violence, just a fun little diversion game, absolutely. Having fun, probably going to play some more right after this. All right, first news piece uh, involves Axon VR. Now, this is a company that I've last talked about probably three and a half months ago. They have just raised $5.8 million in additional seed money. And what they're intending to do is use these funds for what they're calling their HaptX platform. Now, the idea behind their haptic technology is basically a suit. So it's a skin suit and it has hundreds of dots all linked to pneumatic actuators. And the actuators inflate the corresponding dots in the skin whenever the virtual object comes into contact with the player. So this is according to their own literature. And if you look at the video that I've included below, there's a couple of augmented reality clips where they may have uh, an animal like a giraffe or a horse in the palm of their hand. Because of the spacing and number of those dots, having the animal just walk with its hoofs on your hand, it feels literally like there's a small miniature animal walking on the palm of your hand. So very cool. Uh, it'll be neat to see, and I'll tie it into the next one because the next news story is also about haptic uh, feedback. It'll be neat to see which technologies survive and which fall to the wayside. That brings us to the next one, which is uh, Ultra Haptics. So that's the company name. What they are doing different to get that sensation of touch is they are using ultrasound. So basically, ultrasound, for anyone who doesn't know, frequencies above what us humans can hear. So 
the sound waves basically generate, so they're little speakers that they're using and it's the sound waves that create that sensation. Now we may not hear it, but we're probably gonna be pissing off pets, outdoor animals, because they sure as hell can probably hear it, right? Depending on what range they actually pick. But the strength of this design, it's gonna be really good for textures, touching different type of textures. What it's not so good at is that actual sensation of not being able to push through something. So definitely some pluses there, obviously some negatives with that. Those are the types of things that they're looking at addressing. My thoughts, because not every one of these solutions is gonna make it, is hopefully some kind of hybrid. So what might be the norm is a hybrid that lets you, you know, have multiple sensations. Maybe it's a little bit of ultrasound. Maybe it's a little bit of the dots, other haptic feedback types that we've talked about before. What I wonder is how convenient the suit is going to be. If it's anything like a diving suit and if you've gone scuba diving, they're a little bit of a pain in the ass to put on and take off. So if you're looking at jumping into a VR game for 30 minutes, it may not be ideal. So that's what I'm interested in finding out uh, and sharing with you guys is the suit itself. How long does that take to get on and off? All right. Next news story, this one uh, involving a bunch of VR companies, Samsung, Google, Facebook, Sony, all joining forces to drive VR development. Now, the organization that they've formed, the acronym is GVRA, which stands for the Global Virtual Reality Association. And the goal of this organization is to promote responsible development and adoption of VR globally. Goes on to say the association's members will develop and share best practices among themselves, conduct research, and bring the international VR community together as the new technology progresses. All the firms who have signed up to this new association see virtual reality as an IT platform in its own right, with the potential to play key roles in sectors such as education and healthcare. So not just gaming, which I think is important for VR in general anyways. Now this uh, next news story uh, is the kind that I love when I'm researching VR news because I don't just learn about new things in other countries, it's English slang, boffins in this one. So the headline from Liverpool Echo .co.uk reads as follows, Liverpool's Boffins Leading VR Revolution. Now, Liverpool historically was a very powerful trading city and company in Liverpool, VEC business manager, Lynn Dwyer, she talks about what their VR company is doing in Liverpool and it's it's pretty cool. They recently showed car company Bentley the power of VR by recreating a simulated 3D model of their flagship Mulsanne car. And I apologize if I butchered that pronunciation. I am not a big car guy. But the Bentley engineers were apparently so impressed, they decided to start creating virtual prototypes of new model cars before making them. So not only does that streamline their process, it likely will reduce costs over the long haul because they can put these cars into virtual reality and maybe discover design flaws, you know, make changes that would just be way costlier had they done them with physical prototypes. They uh, are also working with companies like Unilever and one of the things Unilever does is they will build new facilities for specific functions. So with, their, uh, with her company, Lynn is able to have them literally test the new facilities, use equipment, maybe move equipment, walk around in a facility. 
So that kind of borders on architectural a little bit. It's a little bit real estate, but it's also very much a part of their everyday business streamlined with the use of virtual reality technology. So neat little story coming out of Liverpool who it's football club. Thanks to marriage. I happen to support anyone else in the UK watching this. Sorry, guys, <laughs> you probably have a different club. All right, next news story. And uh, the end one is Samsung. They are going to release an update which will basically render the Note 7 almost completely useless because the update coming December 19th is going to make it so you can no longer charge your Note 7. Now, for me personally, I think there's still a use for this. I just hate throwing technology like this away. I agree even though it's a drop in the bucket, really 35 out of two plus million, there's always a possibility. So I power it off when not using it, keep it in a porcelain bowl. So if something was to happen, I wouldn't be burning my house down for starters, but I think it still has uses Bluetooth wise. I can use it for a jukebox in my weight room, cardio, other types of things. There's still uses for it for me personally. So uh, just a heads up, if that's something that uh, for some reason like me you still want to use, be wary, December 19th is the day, maybe root it. But again, I do not advocate that or recommend it because I fully realize I'm the idiot taking it into my own hands and you're going to have to make that same decision, right? But obviously the recommendation by Samsung is don't do it, stop using it, so... There you go. All right, guys, that is it for the news on this Saturday. Off to some gaming, some Arizona sunshine. Can't wait. Need to kill some zombies. Cheers as always, guys. Definitely catch you on the VR flip side.